Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. A few weeks ago I published a short video where I demoed a multilingual voice query application on financial documents. And in this video we're going to actually dive in uh, and see how I built this. Uh, first in a Jupyter Notebook and then how I moved it to a Hugging Face Spaces application which is what you probably saw in that video. And I will include all the links uh, in the video description so that you can follow along, okay? All right, uh, let's get started. So here's the application uh, hosted on Spaces that we're gonna eventually build. But of course, first of all, we need to prepare some data, experiment a little bit, uh, which is why we're gonna start with a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, I'm running this one on uh, SageMaker because I need a GPU instance for embeddings, as we will see in a minute. But of course, you could run this locally as long as you have some GPU processing for embeddings. Uh, I have to say, uh, I ran it on CPU first and, you know, it took hours versus not even two minutes on GPU. OK, uh, but I will also provide the embeddings file so that you don't have to do it all over again. OK, so let's take a look at the notebook, start from the beginning and see uh, how we can solve that problem. So here's the notebook and some uh, data files. And again, the link to all that stuff is in the video description. Obviously, I need to install some dependencies, uh, some obvious ones like transformers, sentence transformers, NLTK, etc. Uh, but I also need uh, LibRosa, which is a, a sound processing library which I will need to uh, to work with uh, WAV files, okay, that I'm gonna record. Okay, so uh, install, import all that stuff. And then uh, obviously we need some data, right? Uh, here I'm gonna reuse a, a file that I actually uh, built in a previous video. And again, I will include the link to that, but that file is in the repo as well. And this is basically a CSV file that includes uh, all the 2020 annual filings for S&P 500 companies. So downloading that stuff and preparing it is a story in itself. So I'll, I'll point to that. Uh, but let's just say, OK, we have that data uh, and we can get started with it. OK, we'll take a look at the file in just a minute. Uh, some definitions here. Uh, this is the model that I'm going to use to embed the, the text that um, is actually part of those SCC filings, okay? And, uh, and some file names because as embedding uh, takes a while and, you know, you just need to do it once for a given set of documents. Of course, I want to save that and I want to run uh, my examples again and again without having to go through embeddings all over again, right? Uh, so we'll see what those files are. Uh, so the first step is, of course, uh, load the data and uh, figure out which text I want to use in that data set, uh, which text I'm actually going to run my voice queries on, and then embed the text. And uh, the simplest way to do this embedding is to use the sentence transformer library. OK, and it's pretty much a one liner <laughs> um, with uh, the model name that I selected, uh, a distilled bird variant. You can try other ones. So now I have this embedding model ready to go. And so the next step is, of course, to load the data, right? Read the CSV file. Uh, there are a few duplicates in there. Uh, I don't know why. I'm not sure why. Probably my... Uh, Ingestion process was weird, but anyway, I'll drop the duplicates. And I can see I have 492 um, annual reports in there. And they're already broken down into individual sections. Again, this is explained in a different video. Um, so all the sections in the documents uh, are actually stored in different columns, right? And the one that's particularly interesting to me is this MDNA uh, column, which is the, the management discussion and analysis of the company, right? So that's where the company's management will actually 
explain um, uh, how that year went and how earnings look like and you know all the financial details and of course there's lots of good stuff in there and that's where we want to run the queries okay. so what are we going to do with that mdna section uh, well first we're going to break it down into individual sentences uh, that's a design decision i've made i want my queries to match individual sentences in a document you could go for paragraphs you could go for something else here i went for sentences okay so um I'm breaking down for each row in my data set. I'm breaking down the MDNA section into individual sentences using the uh, NLTK tokenizer. And I'm also storing the number of sentences in each uh, one of those MDNA section. Okay. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when I run the queries on, uh, on the corpus of embedded sentences, the result will be um, a corpus ID, right? It will be the the, ID, the identifier of the top matching sentence or sentences, okay? So if I want to locate the actual sentence um, and the actual document, you know, I need some kind of index that tells me uh, corpus ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is actually in this particular document so in real life you could use you know you would use i guess some kind of back end you could use a vector database or something similar but here to keep it simple i'm just building an in-memory index um, with the number of sentences for each uh, document and so if you tell me hey you know what sentence one two three four five six i can quickly iterate and tell you well this is the one and this is the document it lives in Okay, it's a bit of a hack to keep things simple and uh, and and you know not use a, a backend, but of course at scale you you could not avoid doing that. Okay, so that's what I'm doing: breaking MDNA sections into sentences, keeping the number of sentences in each document, and here we go. Okay, and so we see the total number of sentences is a little more than one hundred eighty-five thousand. Okay. And uh, I'm storing those uh, uh, per document sentence counts into a pickle file because I want to load them again and again without having to do that process, right? Okay, um, obviously the more important thing is to uh, take those individual sentences and embed them, okay? So using the model that I um, loaded with the sentence transformers, I just call model.encode, which is super simple. And uh, I need to wait uh, for 1 minute 47 or 1 minute 48, depending uh, on, a, on a single GPU instance. So that's quite fast. And each one of those sentences becomes um, a 768 uh, dimension embedding. Okay, so now the corpus obviously has the same number of embeddings as I have sentences and 768 dimensions. Okay, so that's kind of a uh, kind of a big file, although, you know, it's not huge. And again, I'm saving that because I don't want to run that process again. Uh, so saving that to, uh, to a NumPy file, right? Okay, simple enough. So now... What we have is, as we can see, uh, we have, of course, the original data set, uh, we have the embeddings, and we have the per document sentence counts, right? So now we can run some queries, okay? So how do we do that? Uh, first, we're going to look at text queries and see how we can do voice in a minute. So a query is very simple. Uh, it's actually a one-liner um, using the... Uh, using the, again, the sentence transformer. So first uh, encode the query as an embedding and call the semantic search function, passing the query and the corpus uh, and asking for the top five results here. Okay. And so that gives me uh, five hits in this case. And, uh, and I get the corpus ID, right? Which is a unique identifier pointing at embeddings. 
right, in my corpus. So that's where my uh, silly index uh, comes into play um, because now all I have to do is enumerate sentence counts and, you know, sum them until I find, uh, until I find the range that includes the corpus ID that I have, right? So in memory index, uh, pretty silly, but you know, again, it works very nicely here and it saves me from using any kind of backend. Okay. So yeah, if, if that's unclear, <laughs> just go and run it. And uh, again, I'm just adding up sentence counts for all, all the documents until, you know, I find the range that includes the, the one that the, uh, that the query returned and that's good enough for me. Right. Okay, um, so how do we how do we find something in there? Well, we just call that function. So let's try to query energy prices could have a negative impact in the future. Uh, and this returns five documents, right? So the corpus ID is what the search uh, query actually returns. And using my uh, index, I can match this to um, this document. Uh, CTRA, not sure what that ticker code is, but you can look it up. And I have the sentence uh, that actually matches my query. And I have a score as well returned by semantic search. Okay. And I've got the top five queries in, uh, uh, sorry, the top five hits um, in uh, descending order. Right. Uh, here's another one. Uh, internal, international sales have significantly increased. Okay. And again, I find the top five sentences, uh, their corpus ID, and I can match that to the document that includes them. So very, very simple, really, you know, one line to encode, uh, one line to uh, query, and um, and yeah, just matching the, the top hits to the, the original corpus, right? No backend, all in memory, which is fine for a smallish data set like that. Okay, so now that we have text figured out, how do we do speech? Well, uh, you know, keep it simple. We'll use a speech to text model, okay? And uh, and there's a really great one from Facebook, the wave to vec model. Um, this is the small one, actually, 300 million parameters. You have multi-billion parameters, models that uh, you can try. Um, but this one is already very good. And uh, so this one will actually do speech to text. So from 21 languages to English, right? So I can speak French, German, Spanish, etc. And what I get is an English sentence, right? So here uh, I'm going to use the model in the simplest possible way. You know, it's I'll just use the, the hugging face pipeline, just loading the model. OK, uh, for automatic speech recognition. Right, so one line of code. And then uh, all I have to do is uh, pass some recordings. So here I've got a couple of samples which actually match the text sentences that we used a minute ago. And so we can use those WAV files to um, convert uh, speech to text and then run text queries, right? Very simple. Um, so we can just do it like that very, very nicely. We can actually listen to this. Uh, let me maybe get some sound here. Nos ventes internationales ont significativement augmenté. Okay, so that's my recording in French. And I'm just going to load that WAV file. And this is where you need that uh, LibRosa library. I'm going to use my Hugging Face pipeline, so the, uh, the ASR. Uh, model and the output of that is just an English sentence. Our international sales have significantly increased. Okay, and this took uh, this took a few seconds, right? Again, this is a this is a GPU instance, so it's reasonably fast. Okay, uh, I have another one here. Le prix de l'énergie pourrait avoir un impact négatif dans le futur. Okay, so French again. Again, loading it, translating it to uh, to English, right? The price of energy could have a negative impact on the future. And so now, you know, we're back to uh, we're back to text queries, okay? Because we have that 
sweet um, speech to text model and we can just use that same function to uh, to grab the uh, the output of the um, text to speech translation and pass it to the model and unsurprisingly uh, we we hit the same documents right so this is really um, this is really the I would say the bulk of the of the application right so uh, using two models one for encoding and embedding um, your corpus and one for um, speech to text, right? And you can see, you know, there's no, there's no machine learning in there, right? It's, uh, if anything, you know, it's, it's just a, a Python app, right? So that's pretty cool. That's a notebook. Uh, now imagine you want to demo this to your uh, stakeholders. Uh, you need more than a notebook. Okay. So now let me show you how, how to actually grab this stuff and build an application with it. And this is where I'm going to use spaces. Okay, so let me show you that. I've covered spaces in a lot of detail in previous videos. So I'm just going to go straight for the throat here. Um, spaces is a hugging face feature that lets you host web applications written with a Streamlit or Gradio um, to basically showcase uh, machine learning applications. Okay. Um, it's super simple to use. Um, you start by creating um, a Git repository, right? Uh, which uh, which I've already done here, and uh, and you add your files to that repo, and you can see I have my uh, CSV file uh, with the um, SEC filings. I've got my embeddings, right? Uh, and I've got a couple of sample uh, WAV files in there. Okay. And of course, the application code, which we're going to look at in a minute. Okay, so I created a repo um, and uh, pushed all that stuff in there. And if you're lucky, you know, it works. If not, you can easily debug it, right? And we can, we'll take a look at the logs. I'll show you how that works. Um, the cool thing is I'm using Gradio here, by the way. And the cool thing is I can actually do all the work locally, right? So I can fire up uh, a Gradio app locally, which makes it really easy to um, uh, to uh, write and test and, and debug my app. And uh, once it works locally, I can just push it to that repository and it works, right? Um, so pretty cool. Uh, I like to, to work locally when I can, okay? Um, so here's the repo that I created. Uh, we can see all the files. I'll include the uh, URL to this. It's it's a public uh, spaces, so you can, you can go and, and play with it, okay? So no surprise. Everything, uh, everything is in there. Um, so the most interesting bit is, of course, the application. So let's take a look at the app. And you will see it's very, very similar to the notebook code, right? So I'm importing all that stuff. Uh, radio is the most important uh, addition here, of course. Um, and Obviously, I'm not doing the embedding process here. I'm just using the uh, uh, the embeddings that I've already processed and saved, right? You can see them here. And I'm using the same models that I already used. Okay. So the, um, the application is then very, very similar to Notebook. I, you know, I load the corpus. Um, because I do need to get the uh, the original uh, the original sentences. Uh, I tokenize them again. You know, I guess I could have saved that as well. Uh, but you know, as it turns out, it was easier to do it that way. Just load it again. It's it works here because it is a simple data set. Again, there is no backend uh, integration, so I'm cutting a few corners, right? So loading the corpus running that tokenization and and sentence count process again okay uh, then loading the embeddings which we have already computed that, that took about two minutes on a gpu so we don't want to do that every time and then the rest is pretty much identical load the embedding model uh, load the speech to text model uh, my uh, find sentence function that runs the query, uh, finds the actual source document. Uh, and there's a little bit more uh, 
data returned here. Um, this is actually a cool uh, feature in uh, in Gradio where um, you can, if a function returns, if your processing function returns uh, a pandas data frame, uh, you can display it very nicely, as we'll see in a second, right? That beats just plain text, I guess. Looks nice. And um, and then I, I have pretty much the Gradio part, right? And you can see the, the, the overall thing is yeah, 112 lines. And honestly, half of that is just UI code, right? So I just took that query process from my notebook and then I built the Gradio UI, right? Which is very simple. Um, it has um, a radio button to say, uh, hey, am I using a text query or speech query? Uh, it has a text box uh, for text input. It has an audio input for uh, speech input and a slider to control how many hits I want uh, the query to return. Uh, and the outputs are basically a text box to show um, the query itself uh, coming out of the speech to text model and that data frame output, which is where I actually display the results as returned by my uh, search function. Right, and then the interface, super simple. I have a bunch of uh, ready-made examples, and the process function is what you think it is. Uh, if I'm going for speech, then you know, load, uh, load the file that was recorded um, through the microphone, and you know, ASR it, engine find the matching sentences. If the input selection is text, then okay, I've got the text query already, and I can just go and and hit the corpus. So, um, you know, there wasn't any trick, honestly, in uh, in migrating my notebook to, to spaces. I, I don't remember uh, hitting a lot of problems. Um, that just worked, right? Uh, the two things that are worth mentioning is, of course, how do you install dependencies? So you can install Python packages uh, with a requirements.txt file in the repo. And if you have native dependencies, yeah, I guess that one thing stopped me for a few minutes. Um, I needed that lib sound file one a native dependency. Well, you can install that as well uh, in a packages.txt file, right? And when the app starts, it's gonna do all of that automatically. And you can actually see the logs here. That's that's really nice. You can see really what's going on here. Um, yep. So I can see you know the models being downloaded and and everything, everything going on here. So for debugging, this is this is really nice, right? Right. Again, I would recommend testing locally, working locally, makes everything simpler. Um, and uh, and then once it works on your machine, uh, push it to spaces. And yeah, chances are you know maybe you're missing a dependency or something, and you can just uh, add them either in the requirements txt or packages txt files, right? Okay, so let's try the app. I can see it's running. Hopefully it's working. So let's try and yeah, let's try and run those samples, same ones we run in the notebook. Nos ventes internationales ont significativement augmenté. Okay, so that's my recording. So that's the local WAV file that the ASR model will work from. Click on submit. Takes a few seconds to run the uh, the speech to text and translation. And this is the first hit in a while, so that one's going to be slower, I guess. And then it's going to run the query. Yep. Okay, we can do another one, maybe. Let's do one in Spanish. See how that works. El precio de la energía podría tener un impacto negativo en el futuro. So I don't speak Spanish, in case you're wondering. And it's not my voice. And I actually generated this one with Amazon Polly, which is the uh, text-to-speech service on AWS. Okay, and we run the query, and we should see results. All right, translation is good, and the hits are good. Okay, let's do one in German. I think this one comes from Polly as well. Let's do five hits. Mehrere Steuerbehörden untersuchen unser Unternehmen. Okay, click on Submit. And again, we'll see the query and the results. All 
All right. So this is pretty cool. And just to give you a little background here, I actually built this for a customer presentation. And uh, and when I had the original idea, I thought, oh, I'm gonna need so much help from uh, my uh, nice hugging face colleagues on, I don't know, you know, working with embeddings, working with the models, building spaces, etc. And, you know, much to my surprise, I actually built all of it uh, in, in really, you know, uh, less time than I thought. Um, this, this was an easy process, and, you know, and, you know, if it takes me, I don't know, a couple of days to do this, um, all you smart people out there will go much faster. And uh, there's really, there's really nothing complicated here, right? Um, no surprise. I mean, the, the, the big mess is always getting the data, right? Getting access to the data. Um, once your data is in a CSV file or, you know, something you can load in pandas and start messing with. Um, honestly, you're almost there. Uh, well, that's my experience at least. Okay. Anyway, I hope that was fun. I hope um, um, this gives you lots of ideas to go and play with all those models. You know, NLP, speech to text, uh, computer vision, etc. There are so many cool transformer models out there. So give it a try. Find some data. Start to combine models. Uh, publish some cool spaces. And uh, yeah, ping me. I mean, I'm happy to share all the good stuff that uh, that you build. Okay. All right. That's it for today. Hope you learned a few things. Hope that was fun. All the links in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe for more cool stuff in the future. Okay. Until then, keep rocking. Bye-bye.